Right? We need Bobcat Nation to step up like they've never stepped up before. Um, our student athletes deserve it. Uh, I believe in this place. I believe in this leadership. Um, I can't get, you know, I can't wait to, to get to work. Um, eat them up. <laughs>
Well, they did beat A&M. And so that was nice. That one weekend for me. They beat A&M in football. When? Check it. Texas State has not beaten A and M. No, 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 no. App State beat A and M. Oh, got you. Come on. I thought I thought you meant Texas. Do you watch like, college football anymore? Do you play pick them? I yeah, I play pick. I thought you were talking about Texas State. I was like, when did Texas no. State beat A and M, and when? I'm where sure was I for that? No. Yeah. No. App State beating A and M was fun. Transitive property. We beat A and M, I guess. But like, cool. I I don't know, man. I I'm excited to talk to you about this new coaching staff. I'm excited for. Just to continue just to con- try to put bad football behind us. But even this coaching hire, Jacob, like we talked about a little bit. Other people are really excited. Other people have to be really excited. They're on the ground. Their boots on the ground. They're covering this team day in and day out. And if you don't like the new head coaching hire, that's tough. You have to go to the press conferences. You have to be around the team. But for us not being in San Marcos and not going to the press conferences and not being at the games or on the field – I kind of feel like I can see it from 3,000 feet. I don't love this hire, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't know. How do you feel right now? That's after watching kinda, the press conference, after seeing the quotes. That's kind of how I feel. I mean, the press conference is whatever. Like, it always is. I was just glad Texas State could plug in a microphone. <laughs> for the longest time, you would just get ass sound bites because people just lay their phones up, call it a day. And then Ever Withers one time just kicked everybody's phones off. I remember that. Um, but, but yeah, I was just glad that they had an actual competent media relations team this time around to kind of get something like this out. Uh, it was an expedited coaching shirt. It's like everybody has said they did it in like a week, which is good. Question mark. I mean, everybody was like making noise that this is a state hire or whatever. At the end of the day, it's a football coach and the university is going to throw money at this to try and resolve an issue, but they're not throwing very much money against this. He's getting this exact same pretty much contract that SPAV is getting similar incentives and stuff along the lines. I'm getting the open records released for that. Eventually we'll talk about that in a few, a few episodes, maybe depending on when they get it back to me, but uh, I don't know. I live by UIW right now. I could go to that school walking right now. If I wanted well, to I, you being in San, San Antonio, like what was, what is the feeling around this head coach? Like what's the feeling around, uh, G, uh, gj right yeah gj gj kenny and well they they made it official yesterday right so that was a big or not yesterday the day before yesterday i guess that's what i said um but they made like a whole thing about it and in san antonio the biggest team in the world right now is utsa and it's weird because you'll see billboards and stuff cheering on utsa right by uiw uh but just like everybody on twitter I was like, well, is this guy even what he says he is? Because, you know, he inherited a very good team. And, of course, he's making a deep run into the FCS playoffs, play Sacramento State tomorrow. Um, but They'll beat him. Who knows, yeah. They'll beat Sacramento State. They're, they're, he's got they're, a great quarterback, a great team. So I'd be surprised if they didn't win. Yeah, no, UIW is one of those, now my background, covering the Bison, North Dakota State Bison, the pretty much like, you know, cream of the crop when it comes to FCS football. You can look at all these other teams. None of them are on that same level as South Dakota State, North Dakota. So, like, UIW is going to compete. They're, they're get to the semifinal. They won't play for the national championship. It's fine. Um, it's, you know, it's all good. Or they, they won't win the national championship, I can tell you that much right now, which is good for our guy GJ because he can start freaking recruiting high school football players, which they already started doing. Uh, something that Spavadol's legacy will hold is that he tried to become transfer you, which is cool, but you can't compete against other teams that are using the transfer portal like that. Like you can't compete against university of Texas, right? Up the road. Who's able to just go get a guy like Quinn yours out of the transfer portal. You can't compete with a team like Houston, the Cougars who can go get guys out of the transfer portal. Texas state just wasn't that we needed to be like UTSA. That was getting high school players to come in and high school players turn into college players that have connections to the university connections to the area. Those high school players go back and tell their head coaches, Hey, I'm having a great time at UTSA. The next good running back inside linebacker free safety from that school will go to UTSA. And that's just how the, the cycle continues. Texas state didn't do that. Um, we're doing that now, which is good. Having like connections with high school coaches is important for 
college high school or college of football in Texas. Um, but like, I don't know, man. I hope I hope it works. That's that's kind of where my head's at with this. I hope it works. I mean, Texas State's legacy to this point too, and everything has kind of changed a lot throughout the entire college football landscape because of the impact of the transfer portal and how important that is. I mean, you look at uh, Colorado now with Prime and how everything in the entire school is changing. They're they're lowering their academic standards or changing their academic standards, I should say. No, lowering them is the right word. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. they are. Like they're they are. Yeah, they're adding classes that they didn't have before, or accepting credits that they didn't accept before, mm-hmm. and so it's it's huge for any school. And well, the fact that Texas State wasn't able to compete, or honestly shouldn't have been able to compete, because if you're coming out of, looking for an opportunity to go to the next level or something else, like why would you come here than any other place? Like, what has this place shown you on paper? You know. So what was cool about just the transfer portal? This is before NIL. Just the transfer portal, you had the opportunity to get guys like Brady McBride, who for some reason Texas State fans don't like, even though he is the best quarterback statistically, athletically, eye test wise that they've had in like the 2000s. In like, well, I guess let's rephrase it. Since 2010, he's been the most athletic and arguably the best, like that has come through the school. We got him through the transfer portal. When it was just that, you had the opportunity to go get guys who were getting pushed out by other high school kids. So you have a four-star or a three-star in some cases that's at a school. Coach recruits the high school kid. High school kid comes in. Three-star recruit knows his numbers are going to get cut. All right, well, I'm going to go find somewhere where I can play. Texas State, G5s across the country were those type of places. FCS schools were those type of places. But now with the NIL, things change. Because now you can go to a school, and you don't really even need to be playing, and you can be making money. and Texas State is hurt by that because they are one of the least funded, I would argue, with NILs. Would you agree with that, Jacob? That like when it comes to just collective bargaining, where like collect like not even bargaining, just collective pot of donors, Texas State's donor base cannot go and buy you players either. So you're kinda you're kinda screwed both ways till Sunday, you know? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. I'm glad that we started this podcast with so much positivity. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I am, I'm, I'm positive. I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited that we have a head coach. I'm excited that we had a head, we got a head coach as quickly as we did because when, um, a guy with like four Twitter followers tweets, were announcing the head coach by Friday. That's kind of like shocking. You kind of don't like expect that. I think that, I don't think he was wrong. I think that he, I think he got that right. I think they just announced it on Wednesday, but I think we hired him on Friday. So shout out to that no-named uh, University Star reporter. Um, but like, I'm excited we got it done quickly. I'm excited it's a guy from the area. I'm excited that we're going to recruit high school kids. I'm not excited that it wasn't Sam Houston State coach. I'm not excited that we didn't pay anybody a little bit more money. Um, and I'm not excited that UTSA is going to continue to be this good. Jacob, if I have one thing, my hot take, my hot take to start this, like the, you know, for the first episode is that UTSA will play in the college football playoffs before Texas state wins a bowl game. UTSA will be playing in the college football playoffs before Texas state wins a bowl game. That is how far ahead they are than Texas state, which is awful. And Texas it state, needs ahead. and it pains me every day. Cause I work in San Antonio. I'm a producer at Ken's five. It, and, and it's cover this team all the time. Jeff Trailer is like really good. He's a really good head coach. It's one of those like he was available and we didn't pick him up. You know what I mean? Like that's interesting. Especially um, his commitment to the university at this level. We're talking about he's getting G five offers now. G uh, five. Yeah. Yeah. Power five. Like he he might be the next head coach of like Houston. Maybe I don't know. Like I a Big Twelve team for sure. In the state of Texas, like it's not out of the realm of possibility, but he does, he recruits Texas so well. That's what makes him, and that's what makes his team so, so good, uh, so quickly. So he's going to want to stay in the state. But, you know, shout out to UTSA for figuring that out. And like I said, I think they were ranked 23 or 24 winning Conference USA, and it's the highest ranked group of five member gets a, BA to the playoffs. So it's like, okay, that probably will be like, unless something crazy happens, you know, shout out like Troy in the Sun Belt or 
App State, Coastal, Southern Alabama. Maybe they can do it. Maybe the Sun Belt gets that. But if I was a betting man, I would say UTSA will be playing in the college football playoffs next year or two years from now. Well, in the next format, they changed the whole thing to 16 teams, right? To 12. 12. Well, 12. So it's it's the five Power Five Conference championship winners. They get automatic bids. And then the highest group of five conference champions gets a bid. So that gives six others the opportunity. So Ohio State this year doesn't win the Big Ten. They would get a bid, you know. So that that's how it would work. I'll start. I'll start this pod off with some positivity. I I'm glad that this is a video podcast because you look like Steven Seagal. And <laughs> that's, <somebody tough>. <laughs> that's a tough break for me. You're bro. in the skull cap. Anyway, um, somebody that was very positive about this entire experience, uh, even the recruiting process for himself was G.J. Kinney. And he spoke very highly of the university and all this stuff. I'm going to play a couple sound bites now. I'm just going to insert these, you know, in post, but whatever. Um, it's simple for me. We talk about habits reflecting the mission. That'll be on the back of our shirt. It'll be in, everywhere in the building. Um, and our mission is being champions. Champions in competition, champions in the classroom, and champions in the community. Um, it, it's simple for me. It's easy for the guys. It's, you know, you talk about being a champion, and if, you know, you're not doing the extra, you're not doing the little things, you're sitting in the back of the class, you got your hood up, we want our guys sitting in the front. So if they're not doing the little things that we talk about, if your habits don't reflect the mission of being a champion, then, you, then you're not here, you know, for the right reasons. You're not, you know, you're a fraud. Um, I'm going to hire a great staff, a staff that knows Texas, um, one that rec can recruit the coaches and players um, in, the, in the great state of Texas. Um, you know, I want to hire someone, uh, a coaching staff that is, is going to be a great role model for our student athletes. Um, you know, coaches that are great husbands, coaches that are great fathers. Um, I, I, th I think that's extremely important in college football. Once again, we are going to recruit Texas high school football, right? We're going to recruit, um, we are going to recruit the portal. We're going to identify guys that, that may be left and want to come back that are from the state of Texas. There's too many, too many great players in the state of Texas um, not to do that. What I liked the most about it, a lot of people were talking about how you're so nervous on the podium. What I liked from what I saw out there was just, I don't know, because I remember covering uh, Spav when he got there and it was a huge deal for us you know and let me set this straight with you know the the expectations here at Texas State we we're gonna win we're gonna win games we're gonna win championships we're gonna win bowl games all right and we're gonna win by playing a exciting brand of football and a, a up-tempo exciting offense with a physical tough defense I, I dressed up in an entire like suit I walked up we asked a couple questions we thought we were super cool. He ended up calling me Jake for a long time after that. So I thought we had something. He was our pick too. Uh, I wanted the Sam Houston coach. I guess youth brings optimism, maybe. Maybe He looks like an old 34. He that looks like a young 34. He's been through a lot. He's had that, you know, quick cup of coffee in the NFL. But I don't know. That, I guess that's what they were speaking so highly of him too, is that he's – like played and coached at the highest levels. So that's like a super positive. The thing I did like is that obviously the players liked him because he was able to flip Ashton Hawkins and a couple other guys from the transfer portal back to Texas State to finish out their years. Hopefully. You know, that, that's huge. That's such a big deal. Um, it's a really big deal because you don't want to lose your entire like, you know, offense. It sucks that Hatcher left. Um, I wasn't a big Lane Hatcher guy, but – it's kind of disappointing that he left because now you got a quarterback next year who won't have any reps as a vars as like a you know varsity starter as a starter, but you know does that really matter? Maybe it doesn't. You know what I mean? But yeah, and I know as soon as whatever happens with UIW happens and he's able to get his foot, feet in front of himself and like actually do something at Texas State, he'll do something. You know, he'll announce some cool coaching hire maybe. Uh, or he'll keep Zach Spav at all. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't think that'll happen. Jake went to Cal. Zach probably will end up at a DC somewhere else. I mean, shot. The, okay, statistically speaking, this was the best Texas State defense. Oh yeah, for sure. Did you watch any of the games? Do you agree? I watched the Baylor game with you, kind of. I watched the Nevada game. I was so disappointed, and I canceled so, my 
canceled so, everything after like the second. So let me game. ask you: watching Texas State play, do you think that they were? Do you think that was the best defense that they've had? The defense, I, yeah, it looked good. It I don't looked think so. Good, but I, I still, you know, I don't know. I'm nostalgic from our era with the with the Withers era. No, I think Brian London was just a, mm-hmm. a freak. Um, same with Easy. I, I think that Texas State in 2018 had a better defense than we had this year, but statistically, this was the best defense. So Spavadol gets a lot of credit for that. Zach gets yeah, you a lot could of credit. Run into for all those guys on the square. It was great. <laughs> I think. Uh, I think on the field, good off the field. I think Zach Spavadol deserves a lot of credit for the defense that he was putting on the field. It's just shame that the offense. The thing that you would, were really excited about never really came to fruition. What do you think about this? The fact that we've had two offensive coaches back to back now, because normally you don't do that. What I don't like is that after Withers, right? We hired this young, promising offensive genius, air quotes, um, fresh off of Heisman finalist Will Greer, right at, at uh, West Virginia. And so he comes to Texas State. We're all like, oh my god, he's gonna blow this up. He's a disciple of the air raid. We're going to get this going. And then it never really comes to fruition. I don't think we ran the air raid once. Yeah, maybe. Ever. Like, I'm serious. Like, okay, so those of you at home, the air raid's main tenant is not running the ball. Mm-hmm. Air raid's main tenant is in the name airing it out. I don't think we ever aired it out. I don't think we ever had any plays that were more than, like, 15 yards. Why is that? Why do you, is that, do you think, that we ran Calvin Hill, that we ran these running backs? It's because we didn't have a quarterback to throw, allegedly. But then I go on YouTube, I go on um, Huddle, I, I watch Brady McBride throw in practice, and it's like, this guy can launch it. What are we doing? Why are we taking the ball out of these guys' hands? <sighs> it's frustrating. Afraid to lose that $800,000 check, I guess, and then go to California <laughs> and then lose all your money in taxes. Yeah, there's – so last thing I want to say about Spavel, because I like the guy. He's joining a coach that's 30 and 36, his head coach. So he's renting. He's not buying a place in California because that that coaching staff a bad year this year at Cal could be could be bad year at Cal. Then you're the head coach at Cal. He won't be the head coach. He won't be the the HC. I'm changed. I'm reformed. When they when they fire a coaching staff, they get rid of everybody. Interestingly enough, I was at Wisconsin last week, and I was talking to some of the people that were there, and Luke Fickle, who was arguably the biggest name in the group of five two years ago, taking Cincinnati to the playoffs. He got hired as the head coach of Wisconsin, Wisconsin. And I was asking people, are people excited for this hire? And there wasn't like a, wasn't a definitive yes, which I thought was interesting because everybody was sad that the other coaching staff got fired. So I think we need to take a moment and remember that, that there are people's lives that are changed because of this. But football is a result-based game. And if you don't give me the results that I want, which are wins, I don't really care. Yeah, I've had, I haven't had a reason to care on a Saturday about Texas State in a very long time. I think maybe the last time I actually cared about this team was when we were doing that college pick senior year, and I just voted for Texas State to lose every single year, and I rode that to the top. That's tough. So that yeah. was, what, two years ago? Yeah, it was two years ago, or two and a half, I guess. Life comes at you fast, buddy. So do you have any expectations for this team? I'd like them to. No, <laughs> no, I don't. I, I think that like. I want them to be 500. That's what no, I well, like. But the thing is, I expected a bowl appearance this year and they won four games. So what do I expect in year one from a new head coach and a new staff and a new group of guys and Ty Evans potentially being the starting quarterback, getting real first rep team reps? The same. Four wins. Like, I, expe- I expect a couple of close games. The way that it works. In well, college, the, the, the other thing too is that everybody's so high on this guy for for doing things like having the number one rated offense, putting up fifty two points for the in whole FCS. Right? Yeah, in FCS, he has a Walter Payton Award finalist, has a, a Buck Buchanan Award finalist. You know, he's got a lot of numbers that you would associate with the winner. I guess we've seen that before. You you could argue too that if Ever Withers had just stayed at JMU, his life would be so much better. Um, <laughs> sure, uh, he's living great i mean maybe so jerry fields said this quote jerry fields was a big time donor for texas state for years uh he did not like the withers hire for whatever reason i uh, did not like us hiring an fcs coach 
And he said, think small, be small, act small, be Texas state was like the email that he sent. He stopped sending money. I don't know if he still sends money. I, maybe he doesn't anymore now that we're two coaches later, but he was like, I'm cutting my funding. He was a big time donor, cut his funding. Cool. I think that hiring FCS coaches works. Craig Bull at Wisconsin or at uh, uh, Wyoming, good hire. Uh, Kleiman just won the Big 12 at Kansas State. Both those guys, former North Dakota State head coaches, winning national championships. But the thing is, Jacob, is that GJ is not that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We're, he's not a national championship winning coach. And when you yeah. you you rank, when yeah. you rank, yeah. huh? Yeah, he could be. You it's rank cool. you you uh, you know, and the press release has to say what he's done and stuff like that, and that's cool. You know what I mean? Shout out to him. I'm glad that he's able to coach young guys, um, and get get guys in positions to win at the FCS level. Very cool. But like, I don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, at the FCS level, there is a very distinct difference between the bad teams and the worst teams and the good teams and the bad teams. And there's only like three great teams. And those three great teams just pass around the championship year after year after year. Okay. Sam Houston state potentially could be that. We'll see if they can get it done this year, but it essentially is just North Dakota state and whoever comes runner up to them. That's just how it is. Sorry. That's the fact. This guy hasn't even been in that position. Like, I, I don't I don't think he's ever been in that position before. So we're hi- hiring somebody that, is that incarnate word is a great hire, but not because of what he's doing at the FCS level. It's because of the connections he has to high schools, the connections he has to Texas football. You can leave the Walter Payton stuff off. Like I've just, you, you can, you can leave the points per game off. You can, cause those really, they get excited. They get the fan excited at home. The dad who's sending his daughter to Texas state for the first time, her first semester is this fall. And he's like, oh, I can't wait to come for parents weekend. I haven't watched a Texas state game ever in my life. Cause those are the fans that Texas state's going after here. You know what I mean? Like there's you and me, the jaded, the, 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 the you know, the angry fan. And there's the fans on Twitter who are, you know, deservingly angry, but there's a group of fans that come in every single year, like clockwork, Jacob. Every single late August, they show up to campus and it's them and it's nine times out of 10, two parents that are showing up there and they're trying, Texas State's trying to get all three of them to come to games. They just, they are, that's the, that's the marketability. That's what they're trying to do. This guy better be helping people into tower. This guy better be pushing. Like, I'm serious. Like, <laughs> Yeah, he better be helping. They're, they're pushing he cards. Needs, yeah. He needs to be pushing dudes in. Like I, I want to see Texas State football guys moving kids in because that's what it's going to take to get people into that stadium. I remember too because I, I lived in Tower. Uh, my buddy Tristan was an RA at Tower too, so we would see a bunch of freshman football players when you and I were over there. Um, and so we would meet these guys, and they would introduce themselves to us, and they would think that we'd know who they are especially given who we are, you know, like we cover the team. I'm like, oh, who are you? What do you play? I have no idea who you are, sir. No, I have no idea who you are. And I don't want to interview you either. I, I miss them. I miss the football players that lived in Tower. Those were some good guys. They were the first people that I knew that wore slides with no socks. It's a division at one athlete look. I get it. I can't do it. The dogs are just too hairy. But some people can pull off the look. Um, So... Hopefully good. I don't know. The thing that has changed at Texas State and is decidedly yeah, different is the Texas State University president. And that's our one bright spot as a university as a whole. I mean, academics and stuff aside, of course, I'm talking about football. And I don't care about that. Yeah. I, academics I aside, well, Texas State is the Harvard on the river academically. If, if, if they can set up a live stream of Texas State students doing research, I'll, I'll watch it. <laughs> if you can show no, like, seriously, if you want to show me video of the poli sci kids debating, I'll watch I, it. I won't watch that. I'll watch no, I'll watch it. I'll throw you, it on YouTube. I'll, you I'll go check on, it you out. Go on Bobcat TV? Mm-hmm. I'll check it out. But the if you know the thing that I care about, or well, the thing that I'm forced to care about because the only you know thing that I can show my friends highlights on on Sunday or Sundays and Monday mornings Low is luck. football. Yeah. So like, you know, it, people get mad about that, Jacob. They get mad about like, well, what about the academics? YouTube's free. Throw up a live stream. I'm serious. Like, my team lost by two touchdowns, but hey, look at this debate video. Look at the way this kid articulates. My school, you know? <laughs> Shit, dude, Harvard, 
nobody cares about Harvard football. I go on YouTube right now. There's a thousand clips of the Harvard debate team doing stuff. There's a million clips of like the, uh, the Creighton chess team doing stuff, you know, cool. We don't have that. We have football. We have basketball, shout out basketball, shout out baseball, but you know, that's what we got. I'll say too that Texas State's record of not aggressively going after high school kids, very high performing high school kids or people or, you know, guys that were great at like, you know, big San Antonio schools, uh, like Reagan and, you know, Cibolo and all these other, you, you think about like crazy uh, high school legacy teams. It's crazy because San Marcos is the headquarters of the Texas State High School Coaching Association. And it's right there off of uh, 35. And you see it every time you pass through. And so for Spavit, I'll just throw this into transfer use. Pretty insulting, especially because it didn't even work working out. Uh, maybe that was just the offensive scheme, bu- bubble screen, bubble screen, run on the oh, one drive yeah. line. I'll, I'll, I'll sum it up. The, the idea was we need guys who understand the playbook coming from universities. They have seen a college offense. They know what it takes to be a college athlete. We bring them in. It's easier to teach a new dog a bubble screen versus teach a high school kid who's never been on campus before how to lift weights, go to class, and also a, a complex offensive playbook. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I'm just like, come on. Can't we it just... Wasn't the right, no, it wasn't the right decision. Well, in hindsight, armchair quarterback wasn't the right decision to make, but I understand where he was going from. So you're telling me if I can get on my PlayStation, play NCAA, bring Texas State to a national title, it's not that simple? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not um yeah so we'll figure but yeah I, I don't know i think the university has a renewed commitment to athletics is what i'm trying to get to we'll see what what is your expectation before we wrap wrap it here what's your expectation because i'm doing four wins and a lot of free t-shirts i think we could be 500 we lost games that we shouldn't have this. so bowl you think bowl eligibility you think we're bowl eligibility this year? Yeah, for sure. I think the pieces were there and they just were pissed away, to be honest. Like, I don't know. I was, I was super underwhelmed. I mean, go back to the very first day, Nevada. All right. We were five, we were point favorites. Everything looked good. And we just okay. got spanked. Let me, let me read you the schedule at Baylor, win or loss. Oh, loss. At UTSA, win or loss. Loss. So, 0 and 2, mm-hmm. home against Nevada. We can win that. One and two. That's what you have in the non-conference. And then you look at the conference schedule. You got App State. You have, you know, South Alabama. Six wins is a lot. Six wins is a lot. I think four wins. I think a lot of T-shirts. And, um, you know, hopefully it's better offense. You lose. First, you lose by a lot. Then you lose by a little. Then you win by a little. Then you win by a lot. That's how it works in college sports. So we're in the lose by a little camp. So maybe next year we win by a little. We've been losing by a little for a long time, though. Six and six is a lot to ask for. I think four, four and eight, five and seven, it's like more realistic. Six and six is kind of where I have my cap. We'll see where it goes. I'm always most negative in December and January. And by yeah, like July. And you get your annual free jersey from the big bin that they're throwing away. Then you mm-hmm. re-up. Yeah. Yeah. Spring, spring, <laughs> spring practice to get excited. And then like August, I'm like, could this team win the West? Could we play in the Sunbelt title? I Are we 25 and they people? Yeah. The rest of the Sunbelt West isn't any – Troy just won the, the, the conference championship out of the West. So they're good. South Alabama won 10 games. They're good. They're bringing back a lot of the same guys next year. They're bringing back good coaching staffs next year. ULM didn't look good. Arkansas State looks like they're years and years behind where Texas State is currently, so I don't think they'll be any good. Uh, and Southern Miss – was a terrible quarterback room away from winning the West. Like if they had a better quarterback room, they probably could have won the West this year with the defense. They signed Brady McBride. Did they sign Brady McBride? I said, I don't think I thought he was still at App State. So he's riding the bottom of App State. Two teams at the top, Texas State, Southern Miss kind of in the middle, ULM, Arkansas State at the bottom. Six and six is asking for a lot. Five and seven, probably a little bit more realistic. I like where your head's at though. I like the optimism early. I think I think it'll be okay. I don't know. It can't be worse than what it was this year, which is just disappointment after disappointment. Beat App State. What the hell happened? Could yeah. we be bowl eligible? No, we're absolutely not. Okay, never mind. Lose the last two. 
And you were big on this early, but you were you were calling for Spav's job. Not calling for Spav's job, but you thought he was going to get fired like week six. And I was like, yeah, oh, there's no way they don't let him finish out his contract. He's got well, a year left. Here's the thing. You can kind of see the writing on the wall with the play calling. And that was that was my big tip off. Also, I, you know, had a not a great relationship with Spav at all, but like, you know, I kind of know, I knew the guy well enough to be like, I can look at the, I can read the body language. I know what's we happening. His, we went to his chimneys. Uh, <laughs> we went to his well, radio show yeah. and they got decidedly like worse. Yeah, the first time we went, he showed you his watch and he got at a bowl game. Yeah. And then <laughs> here's, here's, this is when I knew that we were in, not in trouble, but like, this is when I knew that like the chimneys coaches show was hitting like rock bottom. That's a bad omen. I think. Well, it was. What's a bad omen? The whole radio show in general. No, I, I oh, like the radio. Oh, I like the radio show. The show. And then it became Spavs, and it just was went from that yeah. to that. It was horrible. I like the radio show. I think GJ and Brant have a little bit of work to do on it next year because I think that they need to tune it up a little bit. Maybe don't have the head coach come every time. Maybe throw like an offensive player in there. Maybe a, a defensive player. Whatever doesn't matter. Um, I knew it was bad when they were Don was the promotions guy for that because that's when we first, or I got, I first got introduced to Don when he was promotions guy at Texas State. He's and lucky so. he has a job, but that's fine. Um, he, I mean, shout out to Don. I mean, he, you know, if he, if they win games, the baseball's great, basketball's looking great, softball, women's basketball, they're all great. Soccer's great. Football wins. He has a job for life. Oh, Texas yeah. State doesn't fire ADs. If he wins a Sun Belt title game, no, Texas he, State does not fire ADs. As a matter of fact, they make no. them members of the president's cabinet at Texas yeah, State. Yeah, like they don't fire ADs. So he has a job for life at this point if he wants it. So, but anyway, shout out to Don. Good for him. I knew it was bad when we were sitting at a table and there was like frat guys, sorority girls there too. And they were like asking us what was going on. Yeah, not there asking for what, the show. They were there. Not there for the show, game. just there for the margaritas. And I was like, this is, uh, this is has great products. This is tough. It's a tough look. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, like Chimis. Well, because if you, okay, this is the, my thing against uh, GJ too, is that it, he was exactly what Spav was. You know, he was this like white guy, offensive genius, air quotes again, um, who wears Jordans and is a real cool dude. I think dramatically from Withers to Spav, like donations and stuff went up because they had Spav out there on the campaign trail, Harkin for this team. Uh, did that work? I don't know. Um, will they do the same thing with GJ? Because that's what uh, our boy Kelly Danfus has done so far, like marching the teams around and kind of trying to get engagement and other things. And his whole run to R1 thing that has nothing to do with athletics, but is on the academic side um, for Texas State. I don't know. But there is, Kelly, I feel Kelly that there's at, a renewed commitment to athletics at Texas State. Kelly was at Arkansas State when they really turned it around for like just sports. Now, granted, all these sports that weren't in these like <laughs> summer or fall or summer and spring kind of sucked. Basketball wasn't ever very good on either side. Um, track was really good and football was pretty good. He's coming to a situation where everything is good except football. And if that's the only thing you have to correct, that's not terrible. And shout out to the rest of Texas State. Even though they don't live stream their researching or debating or writing or anything else, um, seems like things are going okay in, in San Marcos. So collegiately, we're about to enter the dark zone for, you know, football and everything just because after the bowl games, who cares? You know, we start seeing kind of what this Texas team emerges into, into the spring. Um I, I bet we could get K Damp on the pod or some other people. So we'll try to do that. If if you get Kelly on the pod, I will give you a lot of credit. Okay, that, um, won't be, that won't even be hard. I'm an investigative reporter. Okay. We're going to do this. Good luck. I, I'm here. I'm here every week. Whenever you need me, I got you. Cool. Yeah. So we'll try and do this week to week. So thanks, guys. That was episode one. Squaring around. Jake and Andrew. Peace. Uh, we're trying to build a program here that, that, uh, that the university and our community can be proud of. We understand how important football is to Texas and how important it is to our fans and our alumni and our current students as well. And we're excited about the opportunity in front of us.